Wise Up Rise Up show with me, your host, the Queen Bee, Danny Wong. How are you feeling? As we chat this morning to the devilishly handsome, the fabulously wonderful, the incredibly knowledgeable Mr. Fidel Bell Hill, the modern man. Good morning. Jordi Soul, good morning. Fab Naradi, good morning. Elise Woodbine, good morning. The devilishly handsome Ian Dixon, good morning, sir. Shut up for fuck's sake, <laughs> Jesus. The fantastic Lizzie Jackson Barrett, good morning. <laughs> Josephine, Sandra, everybody, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Show Up, Wise Up and Rise Up show with me this morning, your special guest, host, Charles Shohat. Danny has had to step away today, so I'm stepping in for her. So come on into the comments. Let me know that you are with me and that you're showing up this morning and tell me, how is your morning going so far? How I, How is the weather? Danny always covers the weather, doesn't she? So let me know where you are, what the weather is like. For me, I'm looking out the window, it's pretty gray this morning and a bit chilly. So I'm glad I didn't go for a run this morning. Rescheduling things sometimes works in your favor. Hopefully it'll be nice and sunny when I go later in the week. So how are we doing? It's been a while since I stepped in for Danny, so I am excited to hear everybody's news and see how everybody is. We've got a lovely guest waiting in the um, wings, Karen Dawkins. She is a return guest, so we'll catch up with her soon. So tell me what you have all been up to. For me, I have been doing lots of exciting things behind the scenes. Um, both with Danny and loads of her community, actually, um, with Miss Nikki James and everything. We were all in a mastermind together, so that has been excited. Lots of new things. So, good morning, Susan. How are you doing? You are in Preston, sunny but cold. Oh, I like it when it's sunny. I don't mind if it's sunny and cold. It's when it's drizzly and cold that's the worst. Who else have we got um, jumping in? I have a nine-year-old dying to jump on camera. His dad's just grabbed him and taken him away. So hopefully we'll have some peace this morning. So um, there's a few things that I'm going to run through just before we have the lovely Karen come and join us while she's making a cup of tea. What I wanted to share with you and make sure that I reminded you on behalf of Danny that Move B, Get Out The Way is still open. It's open right now and it's kicking off on Monday. So if you want to work with Danny for the next eight weeks, because it kicks off on Monday, to actually get out of your own way. She's an amazing coach at doing this but get out of your own way and um, work around self-sabotage. Now, I don't know about you, but I have certainly, certainly gone through this myself and self-sabotage can be something that can stop you from getting anywhere in life, but especially in business. So if you are in your own way, if you think, do you know what, this year, I want this year to be my year. I want this year to actually mean something. I want to kickstart. I've not stuck to my New Year's resolutions. I've let them go already, but I actually want to get somewhere. Then maybe this is the time that you need to go and visit iamthequeenbee.co.uk forward slash move be and get on the program with um, Danny. She's an absolute amazing coach and she really does get up your bottom and get you moving. Um, good morning, Dominique from Essex, great and cloudy, but excited to hear Karen Dawkins. Good morning, Emma. It's great to have you all in the house. Yeah, I'm really excited to speak to Karen. I've not spoken to her before this morning, so it's really exciting for me because it's someone brand new. Uh, we're going to be chatting about where she was last year and where she is now and where she hopes to go. Um, but before we jump into that, has anybody else got any news? I'm going to take a sip of my tea. We like to celebrate in all of Danny's communities. 
we like to celebrate anything. So if anyone's got anything to celebrate this early in the week or have got anything that they want to make sure they put out there, pop it into the comments because I like to, I will be going back through the comments and I will make sure I take it a like and make sure I come and um, check in on you later on in the week. But for now, let's see if Karen is ready to jump on in and let's start this conversation in the proper show up, wise up and rise up show tradition. Let's see. Good morning, Karen. Hiya. Hi. Yeah, it's working. Tech is working. <laughs> How are you? Earphones aren't working. For some reason, oh, they don't no. work with StreamYard, so. <laughs> oh, no. Tell us in Never the mind. comments, everybody, that everything is okay sound-wise. Let us know if there's any problems. But I think we're perfectly fine, Karen. I think we're doing good. I hope so. I'll switch to Did you manage anyway, to get so. your cup of tea or your coffee? I've got my cup of tea. Good, good. Woohoo! In my everything tastes better with cat hair in it mug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. Like cat. You know what it's it. like with cats. It gets yes, everywhere. I have two of them. I have two of them. And we have a bit of a joke going on in our house at the moment because one of the cats decided to do a disappearing act last week. Um, hey, Jojo. Um, and, yeah, she, she dis he decided to go and do a bit of a disappearing act. We didn't know where he was. It was the longest he'd gone missing for. We were all starting to get a bit worried and a bit stressed. Um, even ran down to somebody's house who was like a couple of miles away because they had this crying black cat, which is something he does. Um, it just appearing and it was like almost like his twin they took a picture of this cat and it was almost like his twin I'm not sure it might have been him um, <laughs> but now we, he's back I've got a he, funny story oh please share <laughs> okay so so two black cats obviously as far as everyone else in the world is concerned one black cat looks exactly like another and I, I get that that's fine um, but having two black cats means you think you know your own cats fairly well um, but, but there seems to be another black cat, just like one of ours in particular, that lives right near us. Oh, and no. my husband was standing, at the back, was standing at the back door, calling, going, come in then, come on, come on. It's, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's not That's your not cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> and the only difference is the other one's got a slightly fluffier tail. Other than that, they are identical. And the other, the other funny story I've got about cats going missing is um, our cat, we, we, we um, adopted them. Um, actually, the weekend of our honeymoon, bizarrely enough, because oh. instead of going on a honeymoon, why why not buy two rescue cats instead? Um, <laughs> and one of them, so they, well, I'm saying that as a proviso to just let you know that we didn't name them. We just adopted the names as well. One's called Phoebe and one's called Moses. Now, Moses <laughs> is a very unusual name for a cat, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> when I was missing, can you imagine calling oh, for him God. when he goes missing? No, okay, and this was me. <laughs> yeah, but... One of the places I searched was the local cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking cat biscuits and calling for Moses whilst walking through a graveyard. Have you any idea how that felt? I mean, I had to laugh. Yeah. I could <laughs> so we adopted our kittens as well. And we had to get two because they won't, won't adopt kittens unless there's another cat in the, in the house. They won't adopt them in, in singles. They only do them in pairs, which I totally get. And this cat sanct or animal sanctuary had a little bit of an ongoing joke um, that they decided to start a thing where they would name all the animals that came into the sanctuary each month by a theme. The theme that happened to be the month that we got our cat and um, that they both went into the sanctuary was baby animals, thank God. Because our little girl is, uh, she's now called Pippi, but she was Fawn. So she's now Pippi Fawn. My little boy was like, no, she has to have a middle name. So she's Pippi Fawn. Our big fluffy cat, he was Pufflin. So he... <laughs> But he still is a pufflin and he looks like a pufflin. But the month before, and I'm so glad they didn't go into it, they named all, all of the animals by restaurant and shop names. So there was Dorothy and Perkins. There was, a, there was McDonald. There was Burger King. 
there was, there was Travis. <laughs> there, oh. there was there was all these shop names. All these animals were called different shop and restaurant names. And I was like, I'm so glad <laughs> that we didn't have that. <laughs> My friend's sister named their cats after um, J one was called JD, and one was called Smirnoff. <laughs> it's quite funny. Isn't it? Jojo oh, says, I've done that with my car. Always mistake my car trying to get the wrong car. <laughs> Dasters. I think we've all yeah. done that. I think we've I did all that. Done that. I walked up to the, I walked up to a car and tried to get in it, thinking it was my husband, and it wasn't. And I can you imagine? And this was like late at night. Oh dear. Oh gosh. I'm sure that we could go on about stories like this Sorry. all day. And I bet you everybody in this audience has stories like that. We all have done it. I know I have like Maybe. several million. My my kid has even turned around and gone, Mum, that's not our car. It's not a car. I've put a thing on the top so that I can find my car now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've got nice Emma car. saying good morning, oh. Karen. Oh, we Emma. have Amy saying you're not late, Amy. We're just getting no. started. You're right never on time. late. Right on time. So, Karen, I know that this is the first time me and you have spoken. Yeah. But you actually came and joined Danny on the show back last August, am I right? Yes, yeah, I was on the show bank holiday Monday in August and <gasps> we'd, we treated ourselves to a little night away. Uh, we, we were in Tunbridge, Wales at the time in a, in a lovely hotel, but unfortunately there was awful internet and the only place I could get a signal was right around the back in the car park and it was in the cold, in the shade, and it was the eight o'clock show. So I was freezing cold, <laughs> couldn't get a signal. Um, so today I'm hoping the internet signals better because obviously I'm at home. So, um, oh, so yeah, we fantastic. had to then. And it was, yeah, things were quite different then. Um, yeah, so, things have changed. So a fair bit. Share, because Danny's audience is constantly growing. Mm. So share with us and share with me a little bit about um, who you are and what you do and um, how things have changed over the, over the last kind of nine months since the last time you were on the show. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. So when I came on in August, I was talking about um, myself and my, my husband working in our small motor trade business. So we're a, a Mazda MX-5 specialist. We're a Mazda authorised independent operator. So we specialise in the little two seater roadsters converted. Oh, I love um, cars. And we do. <laughs> um, and at the time before before lockdown, we were trying to be all things to all MX-5 owners. So you can apply this principle across all businesses um, and it goes to niching. And we talked quite a bit about niching and how important it is to niche. Um, because you'd think if we were a Mazda MX-5 specialist that that would be quite niche. It's it's one particular model of one particular make of car. And you think, well, that's quite niche. But actually, if you think these cars have been around since the, the you know, the 80s. Yeah. They're, you know, there's a lot of changes. You know, there's there's different, you know, even just like air con versus no air con upgrades, changes. The, the style of the car's changed. There's an awful lot to know, an awful lot of parts to hold, an awful lot of different price ranges of the car and therefore the ownership of the car varies according to the older cars normally belonging to the younger people because they're cheaper and they're yeah. older and they need more work and they're very rusty so they're a nightmare to work on and the people don't want to spend any money and then you've got the newer cars which are owned by the you know the, the more discerning people and often they're a, a second car these cars tend yeah. to be a second car to most people and they tend to be not always but they tend to be uh, people that have you know, they've, the kids have left home and it's now their time to have a bit of fun and it's their little, and they polish it and they're all very, they're very, it's like close-knit community kind of, of people. Right. So you've got a, bit, a bit range of, of, of people, cars, costs, attitudes yeah. towards spending money on the cars. So we used to, we were finding that, as you'd expect, the younger owners were the weekend warriors, as some people call them, where they were going away and doing the work themselves, but were just basically phoning up for free advice, which was wasting our time. And my yeah. husband's got all this experience. And then the the, the, the the ideal customers were the people that knew what they wanted, trusted Chris to do it, knew we yeah. had an awesome reputation, and would basically just come to us based on other people in forums telling them to come to us. So we didn't know it was called ideal client, and we didn't know it was niching at the time, because those those that terminology wasn't really in my vocab at the time. But we already knew what was causing us problems, what wasn't. We were juggling customers, you know, not waiting, going to the, dropping them off at the station and picking them up and keeping and parts not arriving, parts being wrong. Yeah. You know, 
things things that weren't our fault that we were then suffering as a, as a result and it was just a massive logistical headache to the point where we were banging our heads against brick wall and had we have done our accounts a bit sooner we would have realized that actually we weren't really making enough money from the effort of both of us working in that business just juggling all the balls literally yeah. it was it was a nightmare and this like I say, you can relate this example to any business, especially mm. the online business world. Because if you're a business analyst yes. or a business mentor or a coach or whatever, you're trying to do all the things for all the things, but you need to be yeah. a bit more specific and specialise in something. Because it just makes life easier. People know what to come to you for. So just before lockdown, facts were against the wall. Everything got too much. And it really, the stress levels got so high that we're just like, no, we've got to change this. We've got to do something about this. So we finally niched down to just doing engine, engine rebuild, engine work. Um, racing track days, building race cars, etc., and then occasionally car sales, so buying and selling um, MX5s. So we niched it right down to that, and we talked about that for like 18 months. We'd spent like two months over Christmas time prior clearing out the workshop, reorganizing everything, deciding we were going to do it, but never doing it. We kept putting it off, and it wasn't yeah. until we got to the point where we just couldn't. We were so stressed. We're just like, no, just yeah. screw it, let's do it. So that's what made us do it. And I think sometimes when you've got something forcing your hand to finally take the step it's like yeah. I've got nothing to lose right now because things can't actually get any worse yeah and it made such a massive difference we were turning away 80 percent of the people that were coming to us we were sending them to other people but fly um but we were we were focusing on the work that was the least stressful was easier to manage and um, was basically more profitable and were more yeah. enjoyable it took away the stress and it also meant yeah. like a step away from the business more because I wasn't juggling everything all the time for him and trying to manage everything in the background and he wasn't doing those quotes for people that he didn't want to do the quotes for let alone the work it was just yeah just, it's like when you're in it you don't see how bad it gets and it's not until you step back and go right if I had to design our ideal business of what we're doing now what would it be and that's when we just yeah so we took the step to make a change over lockdown we managed to clear, and actually as of last week, we finally cleared our backlog of all the project cars that we had that were ours. Um, and we sold about four or five cars just based on our reputation over lockdown. Because people trusted us. So we yeah. sold, sold quite a lot of our stock, finished things off. Because we had the time, we weren't doing the smaller jobs, so we had time. So that all kind of proved how important niching is and working with your ideal client and what effect that can have on your sanity and your business and your income and um, what did and you learn from that that's now taken you because that's taken you that's that's an amazing link into where you are now yeah, isn't it yeah, because exactly. things have changed again and yeah it, it's led to, <laughs> to you actually launching your business yes yeah so back then at the time I was thinking well I do my own thing at some point been a business analyst, a project manager, compliance consultant, IT systems consultant, et cetera, et cetera, in the corporate world for over 20 years. Um, and before that, I was like a development chemist for 10 years at, at a few different um, pharmaceutical companies, including Pfizer, strangely enough. Um, <laughs> and I knew that I knew a lot about a lot, but you can't yeah. always equate all your corporate skills to a small business environment. And I was already loving interacting with all these small businesses um over the last few years anyway because I've been in some like, quite a lot of different Facebook groups to do with like building groups and, and and I was just loving being in the groups and just genuinely networking with people because let's face it most people weren't interested in cars so it wasn't it wasn't for <laughs> finding customers it was more of a building my confidence and skills online etc and so that was going to be on the back burner and right. when I spoke to Danny in August we were actually looking at maybe going down the luxury track days route because it seemed to incorporate my love of helping people and organizing stuff and the hospitality hostess thing and his love of like to build a, a really cool kit car like a Formula One car but faster basically um, yeah and then go in the high end <laughs> market but that would have meant a completely new business new audience new branding new everything and holding a lot of assets to do yes. and it would have tied us down to locations dates etc and we actually started investigating it and then had to step back and realize that although that was very focused on ideal client and a niche and something we wanted to do, it was actually basically screwing us over from a yeah. flexibility, business freedom and everything else perspective, because ultimately we'd be tied to locations and dates and people and assets and 
and this stuff and it's and it's and it's ridiculous how you can know all these things because I'd already done business courses and already had all my business analysis project manager skills but yeah. I hadn't really applied all of the principles and said okay is that taking us where we ultimately want to be ultimately want to be and the and the clear answer was well no in fact definitely not so and this is a mistake that so many business owners make you're in it let's just do that yeah step back and think about not just the ideal client or the what you're doing now or what you're good at or what you'd like to do you've got to think about like your business model like what that ties you to if you want to do one-to-ones like us doing a car service or whatever that's fine if you want a passive income product where you know you can sell something time and time again that's different but we were basically tying ourselves to one-to-one work yeah. with set dates and times and a lot of um other dependencies shall we say with racetrack availabilities and the weather and the travel and the and yeah. everything now um and it just made us realize actually that's not ultimately where he wants to go but when we were really honest what he wants to do is buy and sell like the like older cars like retro cars or supercars or anything with eight pistons you know that's what his that's what sets him on fire that's what makes him like excited like proper sort of Del yeah. boy you know <laughs> not, not a car dealer but just he loves all that stuff and he's so good at it and he knows his Ooh. stuff and that's what he wants to do so it's like well, why are we why are we going down this route of luxury track things when ultimately you want to move on from the mx5s and, and keep that you know keep that going but basically move on to other things so we thought well there's no point us pursuing this new business and, I, and it just seemed to be with lockdown it was a perfect time for me to because I was doing all this learning and there's networking and I was just realizing how much I loved learning and I loved small businesses and I loved interacting and helping people that this was probably my time that I should actually start thinking about what I wanted to do rather than it always being about you know our business which is why I've left the corporate world back in 2016 was to have the simpler lifestyle and all that stuff yeah so I finally yeah I finally I've gone round and round and round but it's I understand what I wanted to say was this so that we, we, we chatted briefly about this before the show but the the overwhelm and the confusion and the level of perfectionism because I'm a bit of a perfectionist with shiny objects and a bit of FOMO and I want to do everything and I want to help everybody and I'm a people pleaser and I'm a high achiever and all these things and I know a lot of people are and and I think women in particular, not just, but I think women in particular, get in their own damn way and <laughs> won't put themselves out there because they're afraid of starting, because they don't have complete clarity on what they're doing or who they're doing it for or why they're doing it. And so, I've, been, so I've true. been guilty, so guilty of getting in my own way. And I've been sat with my head in my hands, literally going, what is wrong with me? Why am I not doing this? I know so much. I can help so many people. And I thought, so, so with true. I've got to share this with you. So Jojo, Jojo's saying taking a step back and reassuring, <laughs> reassessing is so important. Anything with six pistons is quite, there's a quote right there. <laughs> she loves it. But you're so true. And Gemma Bregg agrees with you that it's so true. There's so many of us as business women, we can get caught up in, in everything and we can really be our own barrier and stop ourselves in so many ways we can get that procrastination um step perfect analysis paralysis paralysis. there's so many ways (laughs) and is that so I know that I was speaking at the beginning and the start of the show that Danny has um the move be get out the way course currently um open and she's kicking that off on monday and i know you have jumped on that course haven't you with danny so tell us a little bit about what self-sabotage looks for you and and what has what has drawn you to 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 actually take that opportunity and run with it because i have this feeling that you're going to utilize this this opportunity to really help you kickstart your your next steps and your business going forward Yeah, I've done I've done a, I've done a lot of inner work. I've I've already done an imposter syndrome course last year. I've done some ba- various business courses and things like that. I've done Lisa Johnson's one to many, so I've, I'm going to soon have my sales funnel set up. So I've done a lot of Fantastic. background work. And when I look at where I've come in the last ten or eleven months, it's actually quite amazing. But because I'm 
always thinking I should be further ahead because you see other people doing it. It's I'm very hard on myself and I know I'm the same. A lot of people are the same. So all I'm saying is, yeah, I know what it's like because I'm there and it's okay. yeah. we're going to get there. We're just going to get there in our own time. Um, so I've joined her. I've, I've been in Danny's audience since sort of summer last year um, and massive fan and wanted to wanted to jump on board, you know, sooner with her or maybe go on to one of the nice, you know, the nice top end masterminds with her. But with the, <laughs> the move be really spoke to me because want to work alongside her I know it's like a little bit of a mastermind and there's some learning and there's some networking and there's a bit of accountability in there and I've realized that although they say coaches need coaches and that's probably what I do need but actually I think I probably thrive better in a mastermind accountability environment where I'm learning and sharing and having that that encouragement from other people going through and, a similar process and that connection I've I, I've just finished a mastermind with Danny and the amazing Nikki James, um, the rock star leveler. And it's amazing to be in a mastermind. And I've been on lots of masterminds. I've been in masterminds um, with lots and lots of people in Danny's uh, community, Lisa's community. <laughs> there's There's been amazing connections made in in and around those tables that I have made best friends and friends for life. I have made connections that have opened up new opportunities and new markets for me. It's enabled me to completely change my business um, model completely and utterly since before lockdown, because this time last year, my, my business looked totally different to what it looks like now. Um, and, you make friends for life in the in these opportunities and it's it's um taking those opportunities you are you'll never regret it because even going into that just to have the mindset to recognize that you're going to what you need and taking that step is huge um and i know that danny wants you to come back on in a few months time once you've done um move be get out of the way and and share you know, your aha moments and your share that further because she loves yeah. to to showcase her clients and allow them to 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 be able to fly anyway, um, as she always says. And it's going to be exciting to watch. I'm so excited to watch where you're going to go next because you've got such a wealth of knowledge from your yeah, background. I I go into other, you know, I'm, I'm networking anyway naturally in, in some of the groups. I've, I haven't done it enough. I know I haven't been putting myself out there, but I have been getting in my own way. But then I'm like, I don't know what to say because I don't know. I don't want to give an unclear message about what I can help people with. And until I'm clear, no one else is yeah. going to be clear. But they won't know yeah. what I can help them. With. So I've been in that that catch-22, getting in my own head and analysis, everything. Just and I, So I, I, I get where people can get stuck in this rut for so long so I'm I'm finally pushing through that I feel like literally since the, the new moon it's literally been like I'm still a bit a bit unsure but I'm but I feel like it's evolving like I yeah. know what I'm going to be focusing on initially is helping people to identify their ideal client and their niche to get off their way so they've got a bit more clarity I certainly have str struggled because I've had a lack of actual structure I'm so used to being in a corporate environment or having to get to work for certain times for certain customers, et cetera, um, and train times and meeting times and stuff like that. And when you're in your own business, especially when you're in lockdown and there's like one day just oh blends into another, you just think, oh, if I don't finish it today, I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow becomes next week. And then suddenly you're about two months behind where you thought you wanted to be. So, so it's true. having that structure is what I need. I need something to say, right, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to focus on first. I'm going to be doing these activities and then I, and then having like some themes for my business and using that in my content so that I've got I've got an, I've got a sort of a I like the structure is a good word but it's having that framework yeah. to hang things off of which means that when you get up in the morning you know what you're going to be posting about that day because you've already planned it you haven't necessarily got all the words or all the pictures or whatever it is right. but you know roughly what your message is going to be and that's what I've needed. And that's what I'm currently just trying to put together literally over the last few weeks. Now that I'm feeling like, I'm, you know, the light is at the end of the tunnel, the fog is lifting. But it's mm -hmm. taken months. You know, it's not an yeah. easy process. And people beat no, themselves and up. 
and you're going to know straight away and they don't you just don't no and it's also connection isn't it um and it's funny we talk about connection because lisa johnson had that amazing summit yesterday all about yes. connection and what came out hugely throughout that summit was how it's so important to have that connection to your words, to have that connection to your audience, to have that connection to what it is that you are planning to support people with and your business messaging and everything like that, but also to have connection in, in life and, uh, and all the way through. So when you connect, I know for me personally, when I connected with the message and the mission, that really lit me up when I when I finally kind of distilled it down and got out my own way and started to see what I really wanted to do it kind yeah. of snowballed and it came together very organically and it built in strength the more I spoke about it the more I got clear about it the more I was able to then share further the more that I was able to get even more clarity around it the more I would yeah. be able to share it and it works so if you guys in the audience are going through that that time where you're trying to to establish your niching and really understand the importance of niching then make sure that you're you're following Karen because Karen's been there she's done it for her and her husband's business and she's now getting clear on it and it's amazing to go on a journey with somebody and watch them get really clear and there's so many people in this audience and in Danny's audience that can help in that area but you've you've got so many different times where you've had to do it in different arenas haven't you Karen through your different work yeah. and through your work history, it's going to give yeah. such a wealth to any of your clients and such a rich yeah. tapestry of information to be able to tap into. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just sharing my journey. I'm not trying to say I've got it sorted because if you came into my group, you'd realise I haven't. I'm just, <laughs> trying to, I'm just trying to be honest because, you know, it's, it's early days of me doing this for myself, but it doesn't mean I haven't got, like, the 20 years of experience behind me as a, as a company director, contracting you know dealing with big businesses six or seven years working with my husband in our small business I've got all of that behind me and then all this all this knowledge and all this learning that I've done and self-development over like the last couple of years have just been an absolute ugh, of, of all this information which I love learning about but I've got so much to offer but then it doesn't but it doesn't mean that I'm confident in my abilities as well I think people get that about they think just because I'm just because I seem outwardly confident about various things I'm also quite shy in certainly lack of confidence in myself. And, and I, cannot, I cannot complain about any one of the people that I've been surrounded by because I've surrounded myself consciously with uplifting, supportive people that are, you know, good values, integrity, honesty, positivity. I mean, we have shit days, but everyone's there for each other. It's different groups that I've interacted in and my family and my friends. You know, you couldn't, I, I'm so lucky to be surrounded by so much support and positivity. And a lot of people don't have that. And it's Amy it's says, just... you're amazing, Karen, and you know loads. Oh, I've got a little mini mastermind with a few of the girls from one of Lisa Johnson's courses that we did last year. And we've got a lovely little group of us, and we've all kind of been there. And it's just it's just lovely to have that little little kind of girl group of friends just supporting each other. It's just like we gossip yeah. mainly, but it's quite good to chat about struggles and we all need gossip. We all need, all need all gossip. Good. It's all good. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just sharing my journey. I'm just just being me and and just yeah, trying to help people and get out of my own way and hopefully add some value. But it's it's just a connection is so important. And it made me realise actually, when I first left pharmaceuticals, when I first left the world of being an employee and went into a bit of did a bit of freelance work for a while um, at National Air Traffic Services, um, it was through connection. It was through inviting myself on a Christmas piss up. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the people in, one of the people in my team had worked for Nats for many, many years, and he was meeting up with some old work colleagues up in London because he used to work with them. And I was like, oh, I've been to London for years. Can I come? And he's like, yeah, come along. So I went along, and a couple of the other people on the team went as well. So we all just had a really good night out in London with his, his other workmates, and I got chatting to one of his workmates, going, oh, what do you do? What do you do? And he said, oh, you know, we're, we're doing this, and we, well, and he was talking about problems in the office with somebody that they were getting rid of. And he's well, asking what I did. And my, my job at the time was a logistics research engineer. How I got that job, I have no idea. That's another story. 
Um, but he, I was explaining what my tasks were in the job. And he goes, oh, you sound like a bit of a technical author. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. And he goes, well, we're actually looking for a technical author. And it was because I got chatting to him on a Christmas night out and was a bit cheeky about, oh, I'll do that. I'll do that a bit cheaper than her. But I actually ended up getting two months down the line. He asked for my CV. I got an interview. I got the job. That got me into the world of contracting and being a director of my own business. And that's what got me into doing consultancy, business analysis, IT systems, and all this other stuff that I would never have done. I would never have thought about, oh, I'll go and be a contractor. It was because that job was available with that person that thought I would be good for it. And then it got me on board. So, and I ended up writing the user guides for the, the air traffic controllers in the new <laughs> air traffic control system and, t- and training people. And it was just like nuts. But the opportunities that come along from literally a random connection where you just invite yourself on a Christmas this month. <laughs> but that I think that is is the beauty of connection it's also the beauty of getting out of your own way and being real being honest and being you know interacting with integrity interacting with honesty and just almost wanting that connection goes further doesn't it it takes us further yeah I think I'm, I'm naturally a I'm a natural networker anyway, just, just because I like knowing, you know, what people do, where they come from, or <laughs> like having a husband, or I just, I've just got a natural, I'm, it's inquisitive, a bit nosy, and I like to, to connect with people on a deeper level than just, what do you do, you know, that sort of rubbish. Yeah. Um, which is why I was probably quite good, when I was internet dating, which is how I met my husband, internet, in, <laughs> Um, I was actually, I, I ended up going on loads of dates and people were like, well, you're so normal. You're not asking weird questions. I'm like, no, I've just come along to have a chat and get to know you. I mean, what else are you going to do on a first date? But people don't do that. People don't try to get to know whether they get on and what they can connect about and what, you know, just finding out someone's backstory is interesting, don't you think? Yeah, I, I'm i so with you. I w- I That's exactly how I would go about it if I was ever plunked back into that. Um, situation again um heaven forbid forbid my husband will kill me Uh, (laughs) but it's it's exactly how I would face it as well because I'm I am just like you I'm a natural network I'm a natural connector I love like having a conversation with somebody and they say what they're looking for they say what they need help with or they say what they're struggling with and all of a sudden I'm like hang on a minute, I need to connect you with you. And it, yeah. does, it makes my day when I can connect people um, and oh, yeah, make yeah. an introduction. I love that. I absolutely love that. that. I did it the other day. I, um, I did it the other day. So somebody was doing call outs for guests for their podcasts and they said, you know, if anyone else has got a podcast or a community where they're looking for guests, pop them underneath. So I went on there to have a look for myself to see whether or not there was anything that I could go on there as, you know, a stylist, coach and speaker. And there happened to be one lady who was looking, she was doing a podcast all about sepsis stories. And it's a fairly, you know, niche and unique sort of podcast. Um, But I happened to know somebody whose dad had had a near miss with sepsis and she'd gone on and she'd done lots of running and she she had done um, loads and loads of fundraising. And it was an old school friend of mine. So I went, hang on a minute, I might know somebody. I went back to my old school friend and I was like reconnected with her. And I was like, are you still still talking about it, still fundraising about it? I think you are. Am I right in thinking X, Y, Z was true? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've put them together and now they're having an amazing conversation. And I've made a friend in the podcaster and reconnected with my old friends, but I've also put them together and they're having a whale of a time connecting. And that just like lights me up. Yeah, I love all that. It's great, isn't it? Pixie Knoll says, I love um, (laughs) knowing people's stories, but feel proper nosy when asking so I'm that annoying person who relates what you say to a story of their own hoping it means you'll say more but then have accidentally made it about themselves I think we all do that that. like I just did it there 
to tell you everything. But the, but it, I think it gives people permission, doesn't it, to actually then then share with you a little bit more, um, yeah. and yeah. and it allows you to make that deeper connection and and that. But then it also opens up the opportunity for you to listen to them, which is so key. Um, but so tell us what are the your top tips let's round up on some top tips tell us some um top tips around niching what what's your um top tips around niching if anyone is listening and they're thinking do you know what i need to think and make sure that i'm niching in the right way right it's i'm putting be... you on the spot there <laughs> mm. right logic states there's got to be something that you're a interested in passionate about is good um it's got to be something where you know you can give someone value and i think it's 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 thinking about it's that whole classic ideal client thing so i know this isn't necessarily not every single person in every single industry has to be really niche an ideal client you know that you don't have to for everything but it just makes everything so much easier when you know who you're talking to and what either pain points or struggles or desires that you're you're that they've got and it's about like making that connection um so it's got to be something that you're passionate about something you enjoy something you can help with and it's got to be you could be in a language that the people that you want to help can understand and the actual language they use um and that's what draws people to you so it, it's it's like you know when you hear um, like you're in a crowded room and you and you hear like your your favorite one of your favorite songs in the background no one else can even hear it over the noise because there's babble and there's been other bands playing other stuff and you don't know. Okay, sorry, pre-COVID. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you, you hear it and you're, because ch- you know that song, that's one of your favourite songs, you love it. And then you suddenly go, oh, it's, you know, Coldplay or, you know, George Michael or whatever. And everyone else is like, how the hell can you hear that? Because you're tuned into it because that's what you're listening. You don't listen for it, but you know it's, when it's, when you hear it, you can't not hear it. Yeah. If you use the language that your ideal client is going to identify with and understands, they resonate, they're going to link to you, it is like that situation where you're you're saying the words that they need to hear to draw you to them. So it is like calling their name out in a crowd. It's like that. I instead of going, that analogy. Hey. It's, it's, it's instead of saying, I've got this thing and shouting at a crowded room, it's like calling them Be out that by name. Song. Saying, playing that song they love that then makes them go oh and you know that's that's what you need you need that connection literally and and by talking their language and it's very very often it is a version of you years ago whatever it might even be a version of you in the future which means that it's quite easy because you know what you like to do you know you understand your situation what your values are you know it's not just about hobbies and your age and what you wear it's about, you know, where you hang out, what your struggles are, like what you like to do in your spare time as well. So if you like to go oh, mountain biking, then people that like mountain biking are going to connect to you more than someone that doesn't ever want to leave the house. You know, it's, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's, it's all about being yourself and sharing you. And, and the last six months have really taught me that it is OK to be me. I've been a bit afraid to be a bit me, like being too positive or too silly or a bit sweary or you know, screw things up a bit when everyone thinks I'm supposed to be this professional that's come from the from the corporate world, you know, with like, you know, JP Morgan and Barclays and HSBC and all these big companies. But I always felt a little bit stifled because you've got to have this corporate image. You've got to turn yes. up in your marked clothes to sit at your desk and be on the phone all day when you're not even dealing with customers. Like, why? It should be about what you offer, what you do, the value you give, the results you get. But unfortunately, in the corporate world, you don't get that. So anyway, I've gone off track. But basically, make no, sure no, it's someone. I think that's a really help. important step and really important point to make. It, it's yeah, it's got to be someone that, that that you want to work with. So niching, ideal client, message, language, it's all very much tied together. But that's what I want to start helping people with on like little power hours or deep dive sessions to really get them clear. So it then makes everything easier. They know where to find their ideal client. They know the language to use, the message to give they know what topics or themes they're covering they know what sorts of products they want to offer but it's all an evolving process and I'm as guilty as an expert of thinking I have to have all the answers before I start you don't you get dictated by life you just get on with it and the action gives you clarity and that gives you excitement that gives you confidence and I've you know I've started and then I've stopped and I've held myself back 
but I'm not stopping now. That's it. This 2021 is going to be it. You know, it's, it's got to happen. If not now, then when? It's that whole yeah. getting any younger. <laughs> But I think that's it. And I think that, you know, you are taking the steps. It's the action and actions that will dictate because we can all get stuck in our heads, can't we? And we can all kind of want, want, want. But if we don't take the actions, if we don't take the steps and even just, you know, signing up and joining Danny for the next eight weeks on move, be, get out, get out of the way is going to take you that next step and take yeah. you on that path. Yeah, and I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait I to see where you go and um, where you come from. So Pixie's set, um, given us one last comment. Um, some of the least professional people I've ever met have been in high level pos positions in corporate business. True. I can I can agree with you there, Pixie. <laughs> totally. Can I just say something about professionalism as well, which I found yeah. well, I came up on it the other day and it really got my back up but I'm afraid it's actually quite true and I hate to think that, that society is this judgmental people judge you on a scale of friendliness at the one end of the scale and professionalism at the other I want to know why those two things are supposed to be mutually exclusive and why you cannot be professional and friendly I mean if I'd rather be friendly over professional and I don't mean I want to be unprofessional I just mean I can be bloody good at what I do, very helpful, a good listener with great integrity, values, honesty, and tell you when I can't help you and tell you when I think I can, and be friendly and want to get to know you, all those things. But it doesn't yeah. mean I'm unprofessional. But why no. do I have to look differently or have my camera at a different angle to make you think I'm professional? I don't get it. I think it's just weird. I think it is. No, it is. It totally is. It is something. That, so I work with clients around how they show up as in what they're nailing their personal style and um, nailing that confidence so that they can look more stylish, feel more confident and ultimately become more visible in life and in their business. And one of the things that is always a topic of conversation early on whenever I work with a long term client and a one to one client is around I want to be really really approachable I want to be kind I want to be you know sensitive and I want to be able to have that interaction but I equally want to be professional and I have exactly the same conversation what why is these you know why are they uniquely separated there exactly. why I I am you know I am kind I'm approachable I do my utmost to be all of those things but I equally am very professional in regards to how I present things how I interact you know making sure that all, all my things are done in a professional way so that you get the best service mm. they don't need to be separate no and I love I, I, I love that I just think it's ridiculous that people think that a photo, literally, this is where I saw it, was someone was being You're right, Jojo. Photo. Yeah, exactly. Integrity. And that's, oh, integrity is like top, top value. My, myself yeah. and my husband in our, in our motor trade business, we've cost ourselves thousands of pounds by being that person with integrity, that even if it was not our fault and we couldn't have done anything about it and it's going to cost us literally a couple of thousand pounds to redo, like an engine build, we've done it because it's not the customer's fault. Yeah. And we've taken it here. And that hasn't helped with the whole finances either, especially no, as a small business. But, but you have but, to have that integrity because that's because that's what gets your customers. When someone talks about you in a, in a bad way, that's got the potential. Literally, you can spend 30 years building up your, your, you know, your customer service and your reputation. And it can take one person 30 seconds to destroy that. Yeah, you don't need that, and, and it shouldn't be totally. a threat on you to business. But also, if you act with integrity, you never need to be scared that somebody else won't have your back and, and speak up for you. Which has happened actually in forums and stuff when someone said, "Oh, they're too expensive," or "Oh, they quoted me this," and, and someone else was like, "Yeah, but you get this, this, and this," and they they are, you know, it's it's that. That's what you want. You want people speaking up for you in other forums. That's something that Lisa mentioned as well on the forum, the, um, the connection summit last night. It's how people yeah. Have have, have had her back in different groups that she wasn't even in and put their head above the parapet and said no actually it's not right to say that and you don't know her and it's that it's yeah that, it's great when you've got that level of integrity because you've given your back you're honest and you 
you've been a good person. I mean, I just want to yeah. do that. I don't want to change the lives of, of idiots and nasty, you know, judgmental people. I want to help change the lives of people for the better. But people who are nice and kind and they've got integrity are hard workers and, you know, just yeah. people. Legs. And like Jojo said, treat people the way you would like to be treated. And I, yes. I, I, I live yes. by that because I, I hold myself to a high you know I'm I'm a very proud person in many ways and I, I have high standards for myself and I try to have those and and try to work with integrity at all points and I, I've done exactly what you've done I, for different reasons in in my other businesses you know taking the hit in order to to make sure that the customer has the best service and that makes mm. such a difference and it leaves a much much better basis for a community for for connection but also for for relationship and relationship building with your customers oh it's it's been amazing chatting with you this morning i can tell you have got such a wealth of knowledge all locked up up there it's so exciting to watch you develop that and bring that out and share that knowledge and you know share those um little bombs of why does it have to be kind or professional i love those conversations so um, please carry on with them (laughs) oh yeah i I can talk for hours you can probably tell (laughs) (laughs) so jojo fantastic to have you thank you for joining us this morning Thank you for everyone who has come and joined us this morning. It's been amazing. I'm just going to pop you backstage, Karen. I'll be back with you in a little while. I'm just going to close up the show. Thank you again for coming and joining me. And I'll speak to you soon. Oh, yes. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Thank you for reminding me. If people want to come and follow you, Karen, um, and they want to know where to get in contact with you, where's the best for them to do that? What's the best way? Right, so I, I am Karen Dawkins Online. Um, that's my page. Um, I'm very new to Instagram, so I'm still learning. Don't judge me on Instagram. I'm still trying to work it all out. Um, but I'm mainly on Facebook. So I've got a page, Karen Dawkins Online, and my group is Small Business Big Ideas, Practical Solutions for Growth. Um, like I say, I'm evolving, I'm growing, I'm taking on a journey with me. I haven't got it all worked out, but I can give you value. And I want, you know, I'm going to really start trying to build my community a, a bit more now because I've just been, been holding myself back. But it's a lovely little group of, of people in there and just, just sharing, supporting, growing. Um, you know, I'd love to have some, yeah, some, some more people in there to, to add to the community. The more people that I can help, the better. Amazing. And um, if you're watching and have enjoyed our conversation this morning, make sure that you go over and join Karen's group. Make sure you go and follow her and follow her journey because I have a feeling it's going to be a big one. Thank you again, Karen, for joining us. And thank you for reminding me to get that information. I would have been coming chasing you to get it, to put it in the comments later on. as well. (laughs) Thank you so much. You are so welcome. I'll speak to you in a moment. So that was our Tuesday morning show up, wise up and rise up show with me, Shell Shohet and the amazing Karen Dawkins. What an amazing lady and what a lovely conversation. Um, Like I said, I am eager to watch Karen and she'll be back on the show, I'm sure, in a few months time to share with Danny her progress since doing the move be out of the way, get out the way program that is currently don't forget open so if you want the opportunity to work with Danny for the next eight weeks because it kicks off on Monday then you need to get yourself in there go to www.iamthequeenbee.co.uk forward slash move b and make sure you get on there because it's going to be an amazing program with Danny and you're going to be able to work with her around self-sabotage So the phones are ringing here. It's going to kick off a good day. Have an amazing day, and I hope to speak to you soon. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye.